Hi there, I'm Kath. Welcome to my channel made by Cathcraft. Thank you very much for joining me today for another one of my videos. And today's video is a fabric haul and sewing plans video. And this is one of my favourite types of video to watch if I'm watching other YouTubers' channels. I love hearing what fabrics people have been buying and their plans for them. I find them very inspiring and enjoyable too. So I hope you will enjoy this video. And I thought it was a um, good time to do it since I haven't done one for a while. I think my last one I did was probably at the beginning of the year. And now we're halfway through March, so it seemed like one was overdue. Um, but I've got a few new fabrics to share and some plans for them. I've also got a new pattern to share and I've got a few knitting plans as well that I'll put at the end of the video. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to sharing them all. But as usual, I thought I'd start the video with what I'm wearing today. And today the weather is beautiful outside. It's really sunny and it's feeling a bit warmer and definitely more like spring. So I thought I'd put on a top that is more of a spring top. And I haven't had this one out since last year, so it's nice to get out again. And it's a shirt I made using this pattern here which is the Calais shirt and shirt dress pattern by Closet Core Patterns. It's a really nice pattern because it has so many different options in it, but you can make some quite different garments all out of this one pattern. But it's a woven shirt and shirt dress pattern. I'll show you the line drawings because you can see all the different variations. There are three different length options available, a cropped length, a tunic length and a dress length. Then there are three different placket options too, a hidden placket, a popover placket and a sort of exposed full placket. There are also two different pleat options, an inverted pleat and a box pleat, two different collars, a bang collar and a um, full collar. So you can have a lot of fun mixing and matching the different um, options on here. And I've made, I think, three versions of the Calais shirt and shirt dress pattern. And they're all really different to each other with different fabrics and different styles to them. And it's got a really good size range too. I've got the paper pattern, which goes from a size 0 to a 20. But there also is a PDF version available, which goes from a 14 to a 32. So yeah, it's a really nice one to sew. And the version I've made here, I pretty much made this version here, which is view B. So I've got the full um, collar on it and I've got this popover placket. I think I went for the, I can't remember which pleat I've gone for actually. And I can't see it now, I've got it on. I can't remember which pleat I went for, but I'll, show you, I'll stand up so you can see the popover placket. And I had fun there and um, playing with the sort of um, direction of the um, check fabric. So I've kind of gone for this sort of um, diagonal here and also on the um, little cuffs here too. And this fabric is a yarn dyed um, gingham cotton fabric that I got from Sew Me Sunshine. I don't know whether they'll have it in stock still. I'll link their website down below and I'll link this fabric if it is still in stock. I know gingham is still really popular, so I'm sure you could find something similar on a number of different um, online fabric websites. But it's really nice and relaxed to wear. The I find it's quite a nice loose fit, so it's not too restrictive um, like some shirts might be. It's, yeah, it's very loose and relaxed. It's kind of got a drop shoulder, which I like. And I'll put a picture up so you can see how it looks on and how the sort of tunic length looks. I've got it teamed with some jeans today because it's not so warm for leggings or even bare legs yet. Um, but hopefully once we get to summer, I think it's really nice like that too. Oh, and I thought I'd mention on the subject of sizing. When I've made the Calais shirt and shirt dress, I've always sized down on the pattern because the finished garment measurements show there's quite a lot of room to it. I think it's designed to be quite oversized and quite boxy. So my measurements would put me across a size two, four and six, and that's two bust, um, four waist and six for hips. But I've always gone for a straight size zero and it's been absolutely fine. There's still plenty of room in the pattern. I guess if I wanted it to be have more of an oversized feel, I might size up a bit, but I quite like it not being too oversized. So that is always the size I've gone for on this one. But that's why I'm wearing today. And now let me move on to showing some of my fabrics and plans. So my first plan I have for spring is to make a t-shirt. And this one is using some fabric from my stash. It's a remnant left over from another project. So it's not a new fabric, this one, but it's one I haven't sewn with for quite a long time. I've had it sitting quite a decent sized remnant piece for quite a while thinking I should really make that into something. And it's this really pretty cotton jersey fabric with this ice cream print on here. This is an art gallery cotton jersey fabric and I had to look online and I found it's still available at Minerva so I'll link it down below. I find art gallery cotton jerseys are really lovely and soft um, so they're really nice to wear. And it's just this really fun print and I think with the white base yeah, and all these ice creams and as you can see it's been cut into before but I've got a few decent sized pieces left. And I originally used this fabric to make a Kaiello wrap dress by Named Clothing. And I made that quite a long time ago now. It must be a couple of years at least. And I'll put a picture up of that one so you can see how it turned out. But I think I have enough left of this fabric to make a t-shirt. And the t-shirt pattern I would like to use up for this fabric 
is the Astaire tea by French Navy. It's a really nice pattern. I had it on my Make 9 this year and I've already made a wearable toile out of it using another remnant piece of fabric I had. Um, and I'll show you that in a moment, but I'll show you the pattern first. So yeah, this pattern here, the Astaire tee, it's quite a boxy fit t-shirt. It's got um, either a long sleeve option or these sort of short grown on sleeves with turn ups. You can add a patch pocket and it's got this cute little um, hem detail with a split hem, um, which I think is quite a nice feature too. So it's quite square and boxy and relaxed and loose fit. It hasn't got the greatest size range ever. That's the only downside. I don't think French Navy patterns do have the biggest size range. So it goes up to a bust 43 inches, waist 39 inches and hips 45 inches. But yeah, I made one version already in some fabric that I wasn't too fussed about, um, just to try out the fit and see whether I liked it before I cut into my ice cream fabric, which I do really like. So I put up my first version I made and I made it using some Dalmatian print cotton jersey that I'd originally used to make a top for my mum because she likes Dalmatians and particularly the 101 Dalmatian story. And it was a nice sew and I enjoyed um, sewing it. So I'm looking forward to now um, turning this fabric into one too. So I think I might make a couple of changes for the, my second version. Well, first of all, I need to check if I do have enough fabric left. So I'm going to have a little play with it. So I'm going to have to keep my fingers crossed on that front. But there aren't too many pattern pieces, so I'm hoping I can squeeze it in. But I think I might like to make my second version a little bit more cropped. I actually lengthened my first version by one inch because I thought it might be nice to tuck into jeans. But I think for the ice cream print, I'd like to go for something a bit boxy and shorter. So that's my plan. I'm going to go for the same size I went for for the first version. And I went for a size A, which is the smallest size on my bust, and a size B on my hips. Because when I looked at the finished garment measurements, there was quite a lot of room on the bust, but not so much room on the hips. So I needed to grade out. So I'm going to go for that size again, but wish me luck. I'm going to have a play with the fabric and fingers crossed I'll have enough to squeeze a cute little t-shirt out of it. Because I think that'll be really nice with a pair of jeans or a pair of shorts for summer. So that is my first plan. So the next fabric that I would like to sew with this spring is a new fabric. It actually arrived in the post this week, so quite good timing for this video. And I was gifted this fabric by Minerva in exchange for a blog post. So once I've sewn up the garment I'd like to make, I'll put a blog post up on their website and I'll be talking all about how I found the fabric to sew with and the pattern I made and how I got on with that pattern too. And I find those blog posts on Minerva's website really useful if I'm researching new fabrics because they generally, if you find a fabric on the website and click on it, if anyone's sewn with it, then there's a blog post down below. You can find out a bit more about the fabric and how, how lightweight it was and any recommendations they have when they were sewing with it. So yeah, I find those posts really useful and I try to include useful details in mine too. So once that blog post is written, I'll include a link to it down below. But I haven't got that for you. I've just got the fabric. I haven't put it in even to wash yet. I'm going to do that today while the weather's really nice. But here it is. It's a baby cord fabric. So it's a really fine needle cord fabric. You can see, and it's cotton. And it's really nice and soft and lightweight and velvety. And I got it in 1.5 metres of this in the dark red colourway. But they have loads of different colours of this um, baby cord fabric. I'll link it down below. And I really love this fabric. I've actually sewn with it a couple of times before in different colourways. I first of all made a Bakerloo dress by Nina Lee um, out of their royal blue colourway and I'll put a picture up so you can see what that looks like. It was a really fun project that one and I really liked adding the little sort of white um, feature ruffle around the collar of that dress. It was a fun sew and really nice and comfy to wear. And I liked it so much I went on to use it again to make a Cassiope dress by I Am Patterns in the bottle green colourway. And again I'll put a picture up of that one too. So another dress. So yeah, I really um, thought it'd be lovely to have another go of sewing with it. And this, for this fabric here, I've got 1.5 metres, like I said, but I would like to make a top this time. Because I haven't got any um, tops made out of corduroy or baby cord. And I thought this baby cord is nice and lightweight, so it'll be perfect for a top. And the pattern I would like to use with this fabric is this one here. Oh, got it upside down. It is the cuff top by the assembly line. I've made this pattern a couple of times before in a cotton lawn. So it'd be nice to try it in something different, like a baby cord. It's a really cute pattern. It's got this sort of boat neck, quite a relaxed um, sort of boxy shape with a um, centre front and centre back seams. So you can have fun with colour blocking on this one. And it's got these sort of oversized feature elasticated cuffs, which I really like. And I've got two versions already and I really enjoy wearing them. And I thought it'd be really nice to make one in a baby cord because I thought it'd be really nice on its own. But I thought in winter it'll be great like layered over a sort of polar neck type top too. I thought that would look really nice as well. And it would look really nice with a blue pair of jeans. In terms of sizing, the cuff top goes up to a bust of 49 inches, a waist 45 inches, the hips 54 inches. 
But yeah, I've made it a couple of times before, so I'll go with the sizing I used before. I think I'll make a slightly cropped version. I don't think it's one I want to tuck in because it's a little bit, even though it's like quite a lightweight baby cord fabric, I think it will look best just sitting nice and straight and boxy in this lovely fabric. But I think it's a really pretty red colour. I'm really looking forward to sewing this up and trying to make a top out of this baby cord fabric. So that'll be a lot of fun to sew, I think. And it's quite a satisfying pattern to sew up the cuff top. It's quite a speedy sew. It comes together really nicely, I find. So yeah, it's an enjoyable sew. I think it'll look really pretty in this dark red baby cord fabric. So the next fabric I've got to share with you is another new fabric and this one I really love the print on this one. It is a cotton lawn fabric, it's another one I got from Minerva but this time it's one I purchased, I didn't get gifted this one. And it is a Dashwood Studio cotton lawn, I just think the print on it is so pretty, so I'll hold up and show you. It's a really lovely lightweight soft cotton lawn with this really lovely print on it, it's got almost like a very very light grey background and then all these spots in really pretty sort of subtle colours. And when I saw it, I just thought that would be lovely to make into a shirt dress. This fabric is by Dashwood Studio. You can see on the selvage there. I, have, I haven't sewn with a Dashwood Studio fabric for quite a while. When I was quite new to sewing, I made a Stevie dress by Tilling the Buttons using a Dashwood Studio viscose. And I had a bit of a nightmare with it. It snagged all over the place. And I think in hindsight, um, it was me and I used the wrong needle probably. I didn't think I used a fine enough needle or maybe I should have used a Microtex needle. But it kind of put me off Dashwood fabrics for a while and I hadn't used one for a while, but I thought that's silly. Um, they make such lovely fabrics and I've seen so many other people getting on really well with them. So I thought I'd give one of their cotton lawns a try and this is really lovely quality. So I'm glad I've got it and I can't wait to turn into a shirt dress for spring. So I do love wearing a shirt dress and I love sewing a shirt dress too. I love all the details when you're sewing a shirt dress, like putting the buttons on and making it nice and sharp and clean. And I think cotton on is such an enjoyable fabric to sew with. So yeah, my plan for this fabric is to turn into a shirt dress. I think I've got two and a half metres, so plenty for that purpose. I was thinking or tempted to try the Lyra shirt dress pattern by Tilling the Buttons. It's a pattern I haven't bought yet and I've seen so many lovely versions on other people and I've heard so many other people enthuse about it so I was really tempted but I thought I've already got a shirt dress pattern and I know I'd like to try um, in a pattern book I already have so I thought I'd really like to give that a try first and maybe I'll give the Lyra a try at some point. So the pattern I think I'm going to use to start this really pretty fabric is from this book here which is the Breaking the Pattern book by Named Clothing. And it's a pattern book I've had for a couple of years and haven't sewn anything from it. So I thought I should finally get around to actually giving something from it a try. And I'd like to make this dress here, the Sarast shirt dress. I'll hold up so you can see. It's a really pretty shirt dress and I think it has some really nice features on, including this little ruffle on the collar, which I think looks really nice. And it's got a gathered skirt, but then it's got this interesting sort of front panel that's not gathered. So I thought it'd be a really interesting one to, um, yeah, to give a go of, really. In terms of um, fabrics, it recommends light to medium weight woven, so I think this cotton lawn would be perfect. And in terms of sizing, the pattern book goes from a UK 6 to a UK 22. The largest size is for bust 46 inches, waist 40 inches and hips 49 inches. So I'm just really looking forward to giving that pattern a go. And I think it will be really lovely fabric to sew with this one. I think it's quite fun as a print, but yeah, quite sort of subtle with the colours too. So hopefully it should be a nice combination for a shirt dress. I haven't made many patterns by name clothing before. The only pattern I've made by them is the Kyello wrap dress. So I'm really looking forward to giving another one of their patterns a go and this time one for a woven fabric. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting that one sewn up for spring. The next fabric I've got to share with you that I have plans to sew with this spring is a fabric I got just before Christmas and it was a bit of an impulse buy at that point. I saw the colours in it. I really loved them. So I bought 2.5 metres of it thinking I'd like to turn it into a dress of some sort but I wasn't sure which dress pattern I might go for at that point. And I thought I'll just pop the fabric away and then get it out when it starts to get towards spring. So I thought it'd make a really nice spring shirt dress of some sort. And this is the fabric here. Yes, yeah, so it's a yarn dyed cotton fabric that I got from Sew Me Sunshine. And I think it's so pretty and fun in these sort of deep green and red and yellow colours. And it's a bit more of a substantial weight than the Dashwood Studio Cotton Lawn. I guess this is more of like a medium weight cotton, whereas that's more of a lightweight cotton. But I still think it'll make a really nice shirt dress for maybe a slightly cooler spring day. So I've been having a think and I think I have an idea of which pattern I'd like to use for this really fun, cool fabric. And the pattern I think I'd like to use is this one here, the Maya Sotis shirt dress pattern by Deer and Doe. This is a pattern I've had for a long time, but I haven't sewn up for a while. I made two versions quite a long time ago, both in double gauze fabric, but I've been wanting to try the pattern again and I thought it'd be really fun in this fabric here. 
So I'll show you um, well, the line drawings, I guess, on the front here. It's kind of an oversized shirt dress pattern and with a few pretty details. It's got darts, so it has quite a nice shape to the bodice. And it's got this um, sort of band collar, buttons at the front, and a gathered skirt. And you can add on an extra tier on the skirt and also some um, sort of ruffle sleeves too. And when I've made the version before, I've made so this top version with just the plain short sleeves, but I've added the ruffle on the skirt. I think with this fabric, though, I'm quite tempted to just go for a simple version like this just to try something different from my previous version and also because this fabric is quite bold itself I figure maybe adding ruffles as well might be a little bit too much so that's why I'm thinking to make this version here in terms of the size range on this pattern I've got the paper pattern which goes up to European size 46 but there are a few more sizes available that extend the size range in pdf so it goes up to a European size 52 which is for a bust of 46 inches but I do find it comes up very oversized this pattern so I've always sized down I think I've always gone for the smallest size, which is the European size 34. And that is for me bust measurement, 31 and a half inches, waist 23 and a half, hips 33 and three quarters. And I am 32, 26, 36, so quite a lot bigger on the waist and hips. But I've always found there's been plenty of room there. I guess with the gathered skirt, there would be lots of room in the hips. But even at the waist, I found there's room still because it is designed to be quite oversized. And I've always wanted a slightly more fitted silhouette. So I think that's what I'm going to do with this one. So... It's one that I'm going to have to deal with when I'm in the mood for some um, serious check matching and thinking very carefully about how I cut it out. But I think that'll be a lot of fun. I do really love those colours. So I'm hoping to get that one sewn up for this spring. So those are all of the sewing plans and fabrics I have for myself for spring. But I've also got a couple of more fabrics that arrived this week. Um, that I'm going to plan to start for my son. And these are two French terry fabrics I got from Minerva. And they are going to be turned into two pairs of mini Hudson pants for my son. He loves the mini Hudson pants pattern by True Bias. I'll put up a line drawing so you can see it. It's quite a simple um, jogger pattern for kids. It comes together really nicely. It's available in ages 2 to 10. It's quite a, quite a nice slim fits the leg, which I think my son likes. And then he goes through them. He wears them all the time and he just wears through the knees of them. He's always been one for wearing through the knees of every pair of joggers he's ever owned. So um, I'm going to be turning some of his pairs that have gone wholly into shorts for summer. It's a nice lightweight French terry, so it should work well for shorts because he does get overheated with any fabric that's too thick. So I've got some black and some green and you can see the kind of loop back fabric there. Um, yeah. They're nice quality French terries, they sew up really nicely. I don't find that when he's bending down they sort of come out of shape at the knees, they seem to have a good recovery to them. So yeah, that'll be a little simple, um, nice kind of palette cleanser type project to work on in between maybe some more complicated projects. And he's also chosen a couple of cords to go with them. He wants this blue cord to go with the green trousers and he wants this zingy bright green cord that he's chosen before to go with the black trousers. So I like that he can customise them and make them just how he wants. He has a lot of fun with that. He loves wearing his green pairs especially because he's quite Minecraft mad. In terms of sizing, I think I've used the same um, size for him for a while. He's eight, nearly nine. And I think I still have the seven traced out and I just gradually lengthen them a little bit because he quite likes the slim fit of the leg anyway. So that works quite well and saves me having to trace out a new size every time he turns a different age. But yeah, just hopefully a nice, quick, simple sew, two pairs of Hudson pants for him. So those are all of the fabrics I've got to share with you that I have sewing plans for this spring. But I've also got a new pattern to share too. And this is a pattern I got from Minerva when they were having a 50% off sale on their simplicity patterns. And I was just having a little browse and I saw this pattern I couldn't resist. And it ended up being a pretty good price. I think it was £4.50 with the 50% um, off. So I couldn't resist it. And it's not a garment pattern. It's a bit different. It is this one here. It is a Simplicity 8044. And it's a pattern to sew stuffed toys. So there is a um, puppy option and a rabbit option, a teddy bear option. You can see the little, uh, oh, okay, so there, the line drawings there, the three different variations. So I thought it was really cute and it's something I'd had in mind. I'd like to give a go for a while. So when I saw the pattern was on special, I thought I'd just try it then. So I've kept a load of my daughter and son's baby clothes from when they're little, little baby grows and things. And I've always liked the idea of turning them into a memory bear that's kind of created out of different pieces of their baby clothes put together. And when they were little, I'd already had, always sort of admired those bears and thought they were really lovely. And I kind of considered um, commissioning someone else to do it because I know there's a market for them and a lot of people make memory bears. But now since I've got a bit more confident with my sewing, I thought I might give it a try myself. So I got this pattern to give it a go. So I think I'll probably make a toile bear to start with, just to give it a try and see how I get on. The pattern is designed for woven fabrics and my children's baby grows are all in sort of cotton jersey type fabrics. So I think I'd need to interface them all um, 
with the woven interfacing to get them to kind of be more um, stable to be able to sew up a little teddy or a rabbit or a puppy. But yeah, I just thought it might be a bit of fun and something different to try and I can see how I get on with it really. Um, yeah, but yeah, I'll probably use some scraps that aren't too precious first. Um, maybe some cotton jersey remnants I've just got in my stash because I think it'll only need really small pieces. Just give it a try and see how I get on before I start cutting into their baby clothes. But that might be a bit of a longer term project, but I thought I could start with getting the pattern, tracing out the pieces, um, seeing how it looked and seeing how I felt about it. And I could just take it slowly and maybe I could work up to making them each a memory bear for Christmas or something like that. So that's my new pattern. So those are all of my sewing patterns and fabrics I've got to share with you in this video. But I've also got a couple of new um, yarns and knitting plans to share too. And the first yarn I've got to share with you is I think the prettiest yarn that I've bought to date. I really, really love it. And it's been one that I've been eyeing up for a while and then I saw recently it was on special and I was in need of a project so I couldn't resist getting some while it was on quite a good deal. And it's a yarn by We Are Knitters, it's their Merry Wool, which I've knitted with before. And it's in this colour here, which is the Sprinkle Fantasy colourway. And it's such a pretty yarn. It's in this sort of off-white or creamy colour. But it's got lots of different flecks of different colours, like greens, oranges, pinks and yellows. Loads of pretty colours. So when it knits up, it really looks beautiful knitted up. So yeah, I've been eyeing it up for a while. And I know I really like to knit with and to wear the Merry Wool. I've made um, two cardigans using the Merry Wool before. I made them both using the We Are Knitters Hackney cardigan pattern and I made one in a mustard colourway and one in a navy blue colourway and I'll put one of them up so you can see what that cardigan looks like. But it's really lovely wool to knit with and it's also really nice and soft to wear too. I don't find it at all itchy on my skin so I've really enjoyed wearing both those cardigans and it's nice and warm too. So yeah, I've got a few balls of this colourway and I can't wait to knit it up and I think I'd like to make another cardigan. But I'd like to make something different from the Hackney cardigan. I'm not exactly sure what pattern I'm going to use, but I want to use something that's quite simple. So really the wool is the kind of star of the show because it's so pretty. See, so yeah, I'm really excited about this one, actually. It's more of a wintry cardigan, I guess, than a spring or summer cardigan. But it's one I'll just enjoy working on. And I know I'll enjoy wearing it next year. So I can't wait to get started using this wool. And then the final yarn I've got to share with you is to make some more projects from these books, which you might have seen before if you've watched some of my older makes videos. They are the Knitted Cats and Kittens book and Knitted Cats and Dogs book, and they're both by Sue Stratford. I originally got given this book here, the Knitted Cats and Kittens book, by my mum, I think for my birthday. And my children really enjoyed choosing cats from this book and getting me to knit them up for them. And then we discovered, as well as the Knitted Cats and Kittens book, there was this Knitted Cats and Dogs book, which has some of the same patterns from the Cats and Kittens book, but also some dog patterns. So I've been working my way through quite a few of the patterns from these books. And my children each now have a little collection of knitted creatures in their rooms. And I hadn't made any knitted cats and dogs for a while, but my daughter was playing with one of her knitted cats the other day and she asked whether we can maybe get the books out again and she could have a look through and see if there were other, any other cats or dogs she might like to be knitted up. And then obviously my son had to have a look too and they both chosen a couple they'd like to be knitted. So I've got this little pile of yarn here ready to be knitted up into various cats and dogs. There's a bit of a mix here. I've got some chunky yarn. Um... Well, that's a chunky yarn, I've got some Aran yarn, I've got some cotton yarn and also some um, four ply yarn too. So we have some plans from these books, so watch this space, um, I'll be sharing with you um, new kitten, cats and kittens and dogs in my future makes videos. They are quite nice little projects, um, because they knit up in lots of little small parts, you can just maybe knit up like one leg on an evening or a tail, and so it doesn't have to be um, too full on, I can just gradually knit them up over time. And I quite enjoy the knitting, I'm not such a keen fan of the sewing up bit because they can be quite fiddly, but it's really nice to see my children enjoying them, so it'll be fun to have these books back out and making a few new little creatures to add to their menageries in their rooms. So those are all of my sewing and knitting plans for spring, and I'm really looking forward to getting stuck into some of those projects. And in the video description below, I will link all of the patterns and fabrics I've mentioned in this video. If the fabrics aren't in stock, I'll link the website I got the fabric from in case you fancy having a browse. So thank you so much for joining me for this video and hearing about my spring plans. I hope you have got some lovely plans for crafting this spring too. If you've enjoyed this video as ever, I would love it if you would give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, then thank you for watching. And if you would like to subscribe, I would love that. And if you press the bell icon, it means you'll be notified when I bring out my future videos. So thank you again for watching. I hope as ever you'll have a wonderful day and I will see you again soon. Bye.